I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. I'm Eli. And I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Torah channel, and it is a Shabbat. Much love to everybody out there. Thank you guys, our little tiny Ecclesia. And um, we love you guys. And let's begin with a quick word of prayer. First of Heavenly Father, we come before you as your people. We come before you as those who are seeking your ways. 
Father, you know our lives, you know our worlds, you know everything about us. You are the magnificent creator of everything. Father, without you, we would have no breath of life. Without you, we would have no hope. And without you, we would not have a Torah. And we thank you for providing a Torah for us. We thank you for providing a Messiah for us and for a way back home. Father, we thank you for your beautiful ingenuity and your creation and your wonderful just world that you have provided for us to live in and to dwell in. Father, I ask that everybody listening to this is blessed, that you will open eyes, open hearts, open ears, that we are able to hear what you have to, to hear to say to us, and that we are able to receive this. Father, we thank you again for your love, and we thank you again for everything. Most important, we thank you for your son, our Messiah, our King. We cannot wait for him, Father. We thank you for everything. We ask this in the name of Yahushua. Amen. All right, gentlemen, how you doing? Good. How's everybody out there? Mr. Cole, let's say hi to everybody in our uh, chat room. All right. Our little itty bitty Klesia. We have Emissary Elohim. What's up, brother? How you doing? The Grand. Grandma. Judith. Judith. Dredge. Dredge. It's, I don't think it's Dredge. I think it's Dredge, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. I don't, how, how do you spell that? D-R-E-G-E. -E. So Dredge? I think it's Dredge. I, I don't know. We're, we're kind of illiterate down here. We, we're, we're in South America. It should be. I thought it was Dredge, but it's not. It's Dredge, I think. All right. Okay. Continue on. Zachary Z and Rhiannon. Hey, what's up, Swaggers? They're, they're cute little kids. Damon, what's up, little buddy? Hope you are well, little buddy. Um, and I think that's it. That's it. All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody out there. This is a Shabbat. This is the day that our Creator has made that we can um, get down and rest and be part of His place. We will begin with a Shema. Shema is a it basically it's a it's a statement it's a um, it's it's not really a greeting but it is a statement is a statement of who our creator is what he wants us to do how he wants us to live what his um, guidelines are for us you know this is a if we only have a couple of verses and that's all we ever had then this is a very very good verse because um, set of verses here because this is a lot of stuff we get from this hero Yashrael. And again, those who do not know who Yashrael is, Yashrael or Israel or Yisrael, however you want to say it, is anybody who is keeping the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator that is in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. No other books included, no, nothing else there. The people that have those and also the faith of Messiah Yahushua, that we know that the son of Elohim Most High was brought down and, and made in the image of a man, was born, and he lived as a man, and he died as a man. And it is by his perfect walk that we are able to get back to this kingdom. And so when we are talking about the Shema, the Shema is, is just a, it's a very, very beautiful thing. And for those who can hear, I don't know if you guys can hear what it sounds like in our house here. Um, we have three seasons here. We have uh, windy, um, kind of sunny, and then we have uh, rainy. And right now we are in the windy side, and our house is kind of as, there's not really like roofs like in normal houses. It's a tin roof. And so right now it feels like it's kind of in hurricane season. So as you hear, it sounds like our house being blown apart. Good news is I think we're all safe, but hopefully it doesn't um, distract you guys. And also for those who do not know, um, if you hear barks or dogs of that nature, we do have 10 pit bulls that are all part of our family that are surrounding us right here. And so if you hear them, we apologize right out of the gate. All right, guys. Hear, O Yashrael, Yahuwah Eloheinu. Yahuwah is one. And you shall love Yahuwah Eloheka with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. And these words, which I command you this day, shall be in your heart. And you shall teach them diligently unto your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house. And when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up, and you shall bind them as a sign upon your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes, and you shall write them upon the posts of your house and on your gates. All right, gentlemen, um, thoughts on this? That's the Shema. I mean, it's, that's, what, that's the, probably one of the most important things in the Torah, like hear and obey. Hear and you, obey. Do, do what Yahuwah says. If you want to be a child of Yahshua, you listen to what Yahuwah commands you. And it also says Yahuwah is one, which is something that, um, well, I mean, he's one, right? He's not multiple. If, if he was multiple, if he was three, it would say Yahuwah is three, and then it would probably explain this out, but everything throughout scriptures doesn't tell us anything like that. Okay, guys, so we are on month 11 of our Creator's calendar. We are on the 13th day, which makes it a Shabbat. It is the fourth day of uh, February, and it is the seventh day. And that is our 
time. Um, gentlemen, are you guys ready to uh, get down with this whole thing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is what we do every Shabbat, guys, is we go through the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. And you can find those at yahuwahandthetorah.net is one place. You can also find them in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And inside of these commands are the greatest things you guys will ever hear. This is a recipe for full success. This is a recipe for how your cake will never be burnt. This is a recipe for how your life will go great. And it doesn't mean that when you keep these, that everything works out just perfectly. Like, like you are on another level and things just don't go wrong. Because they actually go wrong, I would say, probably worse than those who do not keep the Torah. Because if you are a person who is in a religion of man, the religion of men do not keep the law, statutes, and commands. So if you are not keeping the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator, then you are probably not on the attack list of where Hasatan is trying to take people out. Hasatan loves to take out Torah keepers because those are the people who are clinging to our Creator and those are the people who hate Hasatan. All right, so here we go, guys. Commandment number one, be fruitful. Commandment number two, multiply. Number three, replenish the earth. So do it. Have dominion over the fish, fowl, and every living creature. Okay, the herb bearing in every tree is for food. Commandment six, man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Okay, you guys are going to have to speak up over the wind, I think. I don't know if this is actually going through or not. <laughs> every clean, moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Walk before me and be perfect. And guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Fifty-three times it says that, my friends. Teach, uh, every male shall be circumcised eight days old. Teach your children the commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the feast of unleavened bread, Matzah. There is one Torah for the stranger and the Ibrahim. Guys, drop on this real quick. Expand on this for me, Kate or Jade or any one of you guys. A little bit about this. There's one Torah for the stranger and one for the Ibrahim. One thing we have to realize is that there, we get about 200 and some views on this particular segment that we do. And so the majority of the people are people long afterwards that probably don't keep the laws, statutes, and commands. And so when people see things like this, Commandment 17, that says there is one Torah for the stranger and the Ibrahim, this essentially means what? It this means me that back in the day, there was the, the bloodline of Jacob, which was the Ibrahim, which were the Hebrews, the Israelite people. And if you wanted to join that, if you wanted to be grafted in, as they say, you would keep the law as well. You All the same laws would apply to you. Right. Anything else? Any expand on right. this? So, yeah, so basically there's one Torah. Everybody who wants to be a child of Yahshua, or who wants to be the people, they all follow the exact same Torah. There's no different commands. You guys are just saying, there's certain things strangers can't be like, they can't be priests and they can't be kings. But uh, they can be in the tribes of Israel. What are some of the laws of the Gentiles? Uh, I don't. Think you don't know any laws of the Gentiles? Eat uh, pork. Yeah, pork is good. Oh, okay. Um, you can worship any day that you want to worship, right? Jesus is my Sabbath. Jesus is my Sabbath. Um, Jesus is also. He knows my heart. He knows my heart. Those Paul, are, Paul did away with the law. Paul did away with the law, right? These are all the the what we kind of joke about as the laws of the Gentiles because. The one thing you don't want to be is you do not want to be a Gentile. There's no house of Gentile. There's no house of heathen. There's no house of, uh, you know, there's, there's a house of Yisrael and a house of Yehuda, right? And so um, if you are looking for that path to our creator, there's one set of laws that are for you. There's no other set of laws. You will not find them in any other book. You will not find them in man-made doctrines. You will not find them in any church, any 501c3 church. You will find them in the beautiful words of Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. All right. Sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to naught. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that a tool has touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. If a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Yahuwah's laws for criminals. Do not lie with beast. No sacrifices to other gods. Do, do not oppress the stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do, do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return it to him before sunset. Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat what is torn of any beast. No false report. 
Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge righteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress a stranger. Love the stranger. Give your land rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. Obey the messenger Yahuwah sends before you. What do you guys think? Hold on. What do you think about that? This is a, a commandment that we all have today. We don't really talk about a lot of these a lot of the time. When would we see a messenger that Yahuwah sent before us? What does this exactly mean? And how, why would we obey a messenger? And what, what's this about? So when a messenger would come before us, we would need to follow him. Because he'd be from Yahuwah. Yahuwah would send somebody to bring us to the next place to show us. Like we saw uh, Moses had messengers lead him to try Yashrael. David had messengers. A lot of people had messengers talk to them and come to them and teach them. Like Joshua, he had a messenger right, literally talk right before him, and he fell on his face in front of the messenger. So you got to obey the people, but you got to make sure they are from Yahuwah. So what happens if the messenger comes and tells you to do something evil against the Torah? Then you know it's not the, from Yahuwah. Because if he says, I'm near Yahuwah, like could be some pork, that's not right. He wouldn't break the commandments. He would be doing what Yahuwah says to do. Okay. All right. Do not bow down to other Elohim. Serve Yahuwah. Make no covenant with other Elohim or outsiders of the land. Do not make your use of anointing on oil on a little person, or do not make your use of perfume on a little person. Well, you sound like you're in a box or something far away. <laughs> do not eat the fat. Do what you say you are going to do. Return what is your neighbor's. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. Keep the day of atonement. Yom Kippurim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your sister's, your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie with a woman in her uncleanness. You shall not sacrifice your children to Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be holy. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you shall not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely or defraud your neighbor. Do not lie or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do, do, not, do not diverse your cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle linen and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself for the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measurements. Do not walk in the manners of the nations. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, and the Omer count. Keep the feast of trumpets, Jam Torah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shimni Atzoret. If you blaspheme the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, you must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The Torah of Bina Nazir. Or Zit Zit on the four corners of your garments. The law of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's laws of inheritance. Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Now, when we say do not add or take away from the word, when we are going to a Sunday worshiping church, is that taking away or adding to the word? That's definitely taking away and adding because you are adding a day that you think you and worship you're taking away because you're not following the right day that Yahuwah has ordained. Yeah, we're, uh, what are we at? February, March, April. We're, we're heading into Istar, the month of the pagan holiday of Istar. Now, if we... Um, have our kids hide eggs and give them all of this stuff and um, celebrate a big bunny coming out, like a fertility bunny. Is this um, adding to or taking away from the word? That is uh, definitely adding to because that is not one of the feasts of Yahuwah. That is a pagan day. It's like making covenants to the outsiders of the land. Right, and, and doing what they're doing, right? And that's, that's why our creator says, don't hang out with the outsiders. Don't hang out with the world or you become part of that. Okay, one nine. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Bind the laws upon your hand and the frontlets between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorpost. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Now, what do you guys? Why do you guys think there's a commandment here? Remember um, Yahuwah. Why? Why was there just a? It doesn't have. It has one verse to this, and it, the the commandment is remember Yahuwah. What? is this point why why is this reiterated um, to us because if you forget yahuwah you are you know straight away and probably a lot to do with his name as well because uh you say remember yahuwah and you go to from yahoshua's time to now 
How many people you know Yahuwah's name? It's, they know him as God or Lord. Yeah, and you know, that's the big thing about the Shema is that we should be writing this stuff up on our doorposts, up on our hearts, minds, and soul. It should be what we think about when we get up in the morning. It's what we go to bed with, right? It's all of this. That is all part of remembering Yahuwah, right? If we are living the Shema and understanding it, then we are not going to forget Yahuwah. And in the pagan world of just living out there, it's really easy to get up and do your day-to-day -day job and get really... Um, embarked into the real into the, the world and you it's really easy to forget our, our creator on all of this okay circumcise your heart cleave Yahuwah swear by his name destroy graven images do not make an idol of Yahuwah as the pagans do to their Elohim rejoice in all that who has blessed you with do not do us right in your own eyes do not hearken to the words of false prophets um, going back to do not do what is right in your own eyes why do you boys suppose we have such a commandment in this whole thing and how what is what exactly does this mean how do we how do we do this so we are keeping this commandment um are you sure you don't do it if you think something's right in your own eyes you got to take it for your hood but i test against the torah wait in the torah see if it is something that is good or bad yeah and again we don't know what is good or what is bad unless we have genesis exodus leviticus numbers and deuteronomy which has been called the law but it, it's really not the law it's more like the um guide to life is really what it is um how, and it, what happens when you guys start looking at things in your own eyes? I mean, when you start just here on the farm, let's say, for instance, some of your fencing that you guys do. Oh, it's all right, Jade. The, the bus ride's cool. Um, when you do, when you, you know, when you look at something or a job that you're doing and um, you come back in, you're like, Pops, here, here, here's the job. And I come back out there and I'm like, look, this, this doesn't look so good, right? It's doing what's right in your own eyes. How is this detrimental to us with our creator? How is... How can we get off the wrong path on this and forget about our creator? And, and what is it? What does this really mean? Well, if you do what is right in your own eyes, you could be breaking the Torah. You could be separating yourself from Yahuwah. You could be doing things that you could lose your soul for if you do something that's right in your own eyes. And it could be a huge sin and you didn't even know. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Do not hearken to the words of false prophets. Do not make any baldness. Between your eyes, for the dead. You shall not eat any abominable thing. You shall give to a stranger clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. Give tithe of your increase of seed year by year. Laws of the end of the seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Okay, we hear about this a lot, right? And you gotta, you gotta open your mouth, Eli, when we're doing this, please. Enunciate. So when we are talking about do not hardening your heart or shut your hand from the poor, why is this a commandment in the in in the Torah life, right? These are all Torah life commands. The people that keep the Torah are expected right out of the gate that you would not harden your heart or shut your hand from the poor. Why is this reiterated over and over and over? Why do we always why are we always talking about the broken, the poor, the guys in prison, all of this kind of stuff? Why is this? Uh, because they're the people that need the most taken care of, right? Those are the people that are broken. They don't see any light, and it is our job to bring that light to them, to show them that Yahuwah is loving that. We can save a soul just by showing kindness to these people. Yeah, you, you're not, you know, a lot of times people, you know, you don't have to sit there and convert somebody if that's even a word. I don't even know if that, if you are, is there such a word as convert? It's more of a, like, a, a, a lifestyle change. But you can begin that process of a lifestyle change with somebody by showing them compassion and by showing them love. And um, we're always trying to um, you know, help people see those broken people and, and not to forget the broken and the people that need the hugs and the people that, that really, really need help. Okay, let's continue on. Gentlemen. Uh, 133. Guard month one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year, all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judges and officers in all your gates. Do not plant astral poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Now let's go to this real quick, about two or three witnesses, because we get this, a, a lot of people get this a lot, right? Somebody sees something wrong, or they, a lot of people, they won't do anything about this, right? And I guess that is, um, as Torah people, we are called to deal with evil that is in the presence. Why has our creator set this up to be two or three witnesses on a situation? How does that work and what does uh, that mean exactly? So that helps us so people don't just lie. So if one person doesn't like one person, they can't go to the judges and say, hey, this person did a sin here. You'd have to have two or three people so there's actual witnesses because it can't just be one person versus one person, their word versus your word. It has to be two or three people that actually saw something happen. Yeah, there has to be three liars, right? There has to be three people that are condemning an innocent person, right? Like right. literally there has to be three liars or there has to be the people with a good enough heart that it does take the witnesses 
um, to make this happen. And, and this is, you know, something that we, on all of our lives, it's, it's hard to get this set up and do the witness thing correctly in, in this kind of world we're at. Do you have anything, Mr. Cole? Uh, no, Emissary Melahim just said restore by repairing the bre breaches, standing in the gap, making the way. I don't know, the child. Okay, 138. I think I saw that pop up over there. Okay, hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet says to Deuteronomy, do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is to get double portions. Okay, let's let's stop right here on this. Is this is this a commandment we keep in this house? Do you think we keep? There? What are you guys thoughts? Because we, there's we have something to distribute when I when I kick the bucket, right? There's a a commandment is the first child is to get a double portion. We've been talking a lot about that in this house, Jaden. Why is it the the older child gets double portions? Uh, but he has to work harder. Oh, well, that's what I keep telling you. Yeah, now, that's what, you're saying. <laughs> what, what, why does this make any sense at all, Kate? Because the oldest child is supposed to be the most caring for the divide everything up, right? So they take care of everyone. When, when, when the family member, the oldest family member, is dead, and there has to be like an entire thing to like basically support the family, he's gonna have to deal with everything correctly. He's, he should have the heart to take care of the rest of his family with the, what he has, what he's been given. What if the oldest is like a a um a derelict or something or like a, a like how would this Torah command go down when you're giving the first child the double portions and this guy is is not going to take care of it is not going to do it yeah pull it Jacob and Esau Jacob and Esau <laughs> okay why do you think I mean what what is the point of this how how does this work and Kate are you okay with this Torah commandment yeah it's fine I don't really you have, have no problem with it you have no problems with that no so that's what Zach Z says he says double the responsibility equals double the portions Jade and that's what I've been, I've been taking Jade out there. He's been my uh, roughneck here in the last week or so, and he's been getting fine-tuned quite a bit. And this is what I've been explaining, is that um, you're the one who's supposed to be the most responsible out of the entire group of people, because you are the oldest, right? You would be, technically, you would have the, the most uh, experience out of everybody there. And you would also have the most time under Pops that you would understand how I want to get stuff done. Every, is everyone good at this? Double yeah. portions? No, yeah. you're, nobody's going against y'all? No. Okay, good. Okay, here we go. If your brother's cattle or clothes are lost and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. Okay, does this, how does this go for long hair? Because I know there's a Nazarite, Nazarite vow, but we also have, I, I guess it started in probably what, the 80s when they had all these rock bands and all the, the guys started dressing up and they started putting on makeup and they started wearing long hair, and it's like all of these different bands, they started looking like females. If a man has long hair, what do we make of this? How do, is it, is this a, a Nazarite thing? Where is the difference between, um, where, hold on real quick. We have things like, we literally have a, um, water, a, tank. a water tank that just blew up across out right in front of us. And walk, literally like walk. Let's, yeah, literally just like a, a eight foot water tank just blew right in front of us. So let's go back to this water tank. If where is the difference between a guy wanting to wear his hair long and ending up looking um <laughs> no, I'm not I'm not locking I'm not knocking the locks, bro, at all. I'm just saying where is the difference between it? How do we if if our commandment is a man should not wear what pertains to a man or wear we're talking about clothing right here. Yeah, I don't think it has no, to do with hair. You know, we know David and we know his son Absalom had really long hair. Like it went to their feet, like it was so heavy. There, I don't think there's anything wrong with long hair in the Bible. I mean, you couldn't get it caught in bushes. Like Where Absalom. would the difference be between trying to look like a female and trying to, and just having? I mean, long well, hair? I think in a cross line, right? There's like because. Having long hair, there's nothing wrong with that. But it comes to a point if you're trying to look like a female, you're sitting there doing, making it look like a female, trying to be what a female is, and you're not. That's that's wrong. Yeah, and so I would say that if you are, if you have long hair as a guy, and you're duding it up like a chick, and you're like putting it as a female, and you're attempting to look like a female, that is where we are trying to get away from. And um, all right, let's roll on to this. Where's mom? Is she still out there trying to get this back? She's actually out there pushing a big thing around. This is wild. Okay, uh, 145. Okay. If you find a bird's nest with the mother and the babies or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a new house with a flat roof that is able to be lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house 
to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset, if that was his pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant that is poor and needy. Every man shall be put to death for his own sin. Do not go back for the forgotten sheaf in the field. Leave it for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not muzzle your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and name the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Okay, all right. So that is that. Mr. Nicole is back in um, moving a, a thing around. All right, so that is it. Let us get in over to our reading for the day. And let us roll right here. Gentlemen, um, let's see. You guys have anything between this? Anything on the commands at all? Did you guys read that? Yeah. Okay. Where are we at? Yeah, emissary says the house is going to fall on our heads. <laughs> I hope not. It's a brick. It shouldn't fall down, but... Yeah, this is 10 rough. It definitely could, though. You never know. Yeah. All right, so here we are, guys. So we are in Bersheath 23, which is Genesis. And it's not really long, but for those who have not followed this section before, the translation at the top is called the Targums. And the translation at the bottom... Um, let's see. Hold on. Is the bottom... I'm just jiving. Yeah, we, we're jiving two homes. We're not, we're not making fun of anybody with long hair. We're just trying to define what the difference would be where where is where is that the difference right and where do you uh, draw the line, right? yeah where do you draw the line or how do you how do you break that commandment and i think my only point was if you are attempting to look like a female in any way shape or form that that would be what we're not you we know, know yeshua had long hair because he was a nazarite all the pictures you know what you guys don't notice all the pictures of messiah he's he has a little tiny beard and he's he just uh I don't. Do you think he had a small beard? I don't. I don't think. I mean, he's third, third, oh my, almost mid thirties. I think he would have a decent sized beard at some point, I think right? It'd be a big, bushy, banging beard it was on Messiah. But you know, we never see any pictures of Messiah with a big beard. So anyway, let's continue on. Here we go. All right. So we are right here. Um, this is off, gentlemen. You guys ready? Yep. yep. Okay. And Sarah lived one hundred and twenty-seven years. The life of the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirath Arba, that is Kebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Okay, um, this is the mother of you know. This is this mother is the, Isaac. So we need to little recap of last week um, for those who don't know. We uh, Isaac was out to get sacrificed, and people know a lot about the times about the ram and the bushes and how there's a, Abraham's faith was tested. But what they don't know about this, like that you would learn in the book of Jasher and in the Targums is that Satan went to uh, Sarah and told him that Isaac had been killed. And then when he then he came back, told her that she, she was still alive. She had a heart attack with joy, so she died there. Mm -hmm. I want to take us what, back one week ago when we were talking about this. You guys remember, because somebody, I, I think Brother Glenn talked about this, that it, the um, ram being caught in the bush was a prophecy, was was basically a prophecy, or that all through the, the old scriptures there was prophecy. And then... Last week, the ram got caught in the bush, and there was something. Do you guys remember where it was at up here? Uh, um, that it talked about this? So between the foundations. Where is it at right here? I don't know. Yeah, this was off the cuff. I didn't actually know where I was going to do with this. But anyway, it talks about a ram being caught in the bushes, and then it, it also says, um, you have that somewhere in this? The ram was created at the foundation of the Right, earth. that was it. The ram was created at the foundation of the earth. And I didn't get that, but Brother Glenn made a um, comment about that. And then somebody else on um, that had watched this said this was exactly what that was. That was prophecy of Messiah Yahushua that was coming to save us all, which was why this was such a, a big thing. Okay. In the Targums, it says a certain ram which had been created between the evenings of the foundation of the world. Right. So, okay, let me say that real quick. And so, Nicole, if you guys can't hear us because the wind's going mad here, um, it says it was created at the uh, between the evenings of the foundation of the world. And my, my phone is just really sucking here. All right, and this is not working. Um, okay, so anyway, that's what I thought was, was decent. So we have Sarah dying, right? So she's 127 years old. And um, anything else on this part? Um, she, it was really a, it was a, like a testing moment. She didn't see the deception from Hasatan. And I mean, did she, did she die because of her lack of faith, or did she just? Oh, what, she died. She died of like her. It was like like a fear plane, right? Her heart was her heart was broken, right? She just lost the only son she ever had, the only son she had in her old age when it was when it was almost impossible. It was a scary thing for her to hear that Abraham had just started going crazy and killing the kid. So it was almost like Hasatan that like. Almost pulled off a murder on this one. It seems like. Yeah. He definitely did. Um, then he came back and like 
mess they're gonna say, oh, don't worry, it's alive now. I mean, it was just, it's a hard thing, right? It's a hard thing on the human heart to hear that someone you love is just got killed by the other person you love more than anything. And that would be extremely hard to hear that your husband just killed your son, right? All of a sudden, you're, it's going to be completely wacky. All right, let's continue on. Um, three, then Abraham rose up from beside his dead and spoke to the sons of Keth, saying, Guys, I'm sorry about the wind. I don't know if you guys can actually hear this. It's it's as wicked as the uh, the, the rain is. Okay, um, I'm not saying wicked as in Yah stuff. I'm just saying it's pretty loud in here. Okay, this spoke to the sons of Keth, saying, I am a foreigner and a sojourner among you. Give me property for a burial site among you so that I bury my dead from my presence. Now, this was the land that Abraham already owned, right? Why was, why did he already own this land? Well, he didn't have a burial site. He didn't have like a place to bury his place, right? He had a, he had. A, his uh, place to live, he had a well, he had a little garden, but he didn't have a place for his bed. Right. And but. The question was, yeah, the because, question yeah, was. Who are you promised in this land? Right. Like, why is this, this will be a land for your inheritance right. for all your generations? Right. And so why did he, why did he spend money and buy land when Yahuwah had already given him this land? Why is he a righteous was, man. He wants to do things evenly. And even though it is his land, it's not, even though it's promised him saying this is going to be his land, he still wants to keep it right, right? He still wants to be just in the eyes of the people. Yeah, and there's still people there, right? There's still people that, that Imagine go on this land. Imagine if he literally digging a hole and put his dead there. We're yeah. like, what's, what's this? Yep. Right? But if he talks it to him first and get it clear, it gets it all clear, he'd be, it'd be fine. Right. All right, let's continue on. Five. Um, five. And the sons of Keth answered Abraham, saying to him, Hear us, my master. You are a prince of Elohim among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our burial places. None of us withholds from you his burial site from burying your dead. So Abraham rose and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Keth. And again, this is a this is a sign. This is why Father Abraham was so amazing, right? Um, is because he owned all of this, but he was such a respectful guy that he understood. Um, just respect, you know, when you are down and you, you literally bow yourself to the people of the land, you are giving them a, a respect, a level of respect that is just amazing because he wouldn't need to do that. He was a, you know, he was the kind of the, um, I, I don't know, he was, oh, what am I trying to say here, guys? He was already honorable, or respected. honorable. Yeah, I mean, he was beyond honorable respect. We know that when he died, everybody from everywhere came around and celebrated his life that he had they mourned for him yeah they mourned all right going to the top uh, i was gonna agree a few more okay verse eight and he spoke with them saying if it is your desire that i bury my dead from my presence hear me and approach ephraim sons of zohar for me and let me have the cave of Machpelah, which he has which is at the end of his field let him give it to me for the complete amount of silver as property for a burial site among you Okay, we're heading up top. Okay, now we're heading up to the top in here into the Targums. And the days of the life of Sarah were 120 and seven years. The years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah died in Kirath Arba, which is Hebron. And then the other version of it says Jerusalem. And Sarah died in the city of the giants. Okay, so we know that. We, I we mean, have, it is Canaan. It is parts of Canaan, so probably. She died in the city of the giants. That's very interesting. And Abraham came from the mountain of worship and found that she was dead. And he sat to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. And Abraham rose up from the sight of the face of his dead and spake with the sons of Hittah, saying, I am a sojourner and dweller with you. I pray, sell me the inheritance of a sepulcher among you, and I will bury my dead there. And the sons of Hittah responded unto Abraham, saying to him, Attend to us, our Lord. Great before Yahuwah art thou among us. In the best of our sepulchers, sepulchers bury the dead. There is not a man of us who will refuse thee his sepulchre, that ye thou mayest bury thy dead. And Abraham rose and bowed to the people of the land, the sons of Hittah. And he spake to them, saying, If it be with the consent of your mind that I bury my dead from before my face, receive of me and intercede for me before Ephron bar Zokar, that he sell me double his that he sell me his double cave, which is built in the side of his field full the for, full price in silver let him give it to me among you for an inheritance of secular okay thoughts on this anyone at all um i think it's really cool that even though in his like mourning and his grief he's still keeping things at an honorable level so keeping things at like a respectful level even though he's dead and it's probably like he just needs to get his hair buried he needs to get his dealt with he's still level-headed through all of this I can't remember, was it in Jasher or Jubilees where it talks about um, this particular incident where 
that he was even with the death of his wife, he was still, he never ever got like crazy angry. He never ever got where Yah would look at him in a different fashion. He, he held his peace. He was able to hold his sadness, his, his um, probably a lot of anger, a lot of unknowns why, why his wife was dead right here. And, um, you know, it was held to him as patience. And those are, those are amazing things that, you know, I don't have <laughs> at all. I don't have the patience. Okay, Eli, where are we at right here? You're on 10. All right, 10. Now we're down to the bottom again, guys. And Ephron dwelt among the sons of Keth. And Ephron the Kittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the sons of Keth, all who entered at the gate of the city, saying, No, my master, listen to me. I shall give you the field and the cave that is in it. I shall give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I shall give it to you. Bury your dead. And Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. And he spoke to Ephron in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If only you would hear me, I shall give the amount of silver for the field. Take it from me and let me bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My master, listen to me. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So bury your dead. Okay, so now we know that our Messiah was given up for 30 pieces of shekels, which looked about like four bucks, right? Did they have inflation between this time, do you think? Do you think there was inflation between Abraham's time and Yehoshua's time? Anytime there's a government, there's always inflation. Because this is going to be, <laughs> I honestly, I think this is going to be uh, cheaper still. I think it's like... Cheaper little, than back in the day? Yeah. So you're thinking um, Messiah's 30 pieces of silver should have been way up higher? Should have been like yeah, it should have been thousands way, of pieces of silver? It should have been way more. Yeah, it's probably just a bad thing on that. All right, let's continue on. Judas just, Judas just really... Yeah, he rolled him over like for, every, for nothing. I don't he know. was angry at him. Yeah, he was just it was more like, I'll just do it for whatever. Yeah, he did 16. not make any money. Okay, 16. And Abraham listened to Ephraim, and Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephron, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Keth, 400 shekels of silver, currency of the merchants. Thus the field of Ephron, which was in Machpelah, which was before Mamre, the field and the cave which was in it, and all the trees that were in all the surrounding borders were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of Keth, before all who went in at the gate of his city. And after this, Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Mamre, that is in Kebron, in the land of Canaan. Thus the field and the cave that is in it were deeded to Abraham by the sons of Keth as property for a burial site. All right, now back to the top here. Where are we at? Yeah. That is very tough. All right, so this is, again, we're finishing up here with the Targums, the final version of this here. Um, and it says, But Ephron, Ephron the Hittite answered Abraham in the presence of the sons of Hittah, and all who entered the gate of his city, saying, My Lord, listen to me. The field I give thee and the cave which is in it, to thee I give it as a gift before the sons of my people, and I give it to thee. Go, bury thy dead. And Abraham bowed before the sons of Hittah, and he spake with Ephron before the people of the land, saying, Nevertheless, if thou art willing to do me a favor, hear me. I will give thee in silver the price of the field. Take it of me, and I will bury my dead there. And Ephron answered Abraham, saying to him, My lord, hear me. The land as to its price would be 400 selene of silver. Between me and thee, what is that? Bury thy dead. And Abraham hearkened unto Ephron, and Abraham weighed to Ephron the silver, which he had named before the sons of Hittah, 400 selin of silver, good, passing at every table, and receivable in all transactions. Okay? And yeah. the other, what did you have, Jade? Uh, it really seems like, uh, you know, uh, the perfume that uh, yeah, Hoshua got put on him. Yeah. By uh, Mary. Spike Nard stuff? Yeah. yeah. That was 300, it was 300 pieces of silver, so that's almost as much as his field was. Yeah, and you know. And that, then Judas goes and does it for 30. Yeah, well, that guy really, he's, he's just really, he's not. He did it for a tenth of the price of the perfume. Terrible. A tenth of the price of the perfume is really like, so maybe we still was a lot more in his, Yosho's time. Yeah, you know, and I like what the Grand said a while ago, that um, it cost, what does it cost, 30 pieces of silver to feed the entire world, the bread of life for the entire world. And, um, you know, we, and we were talking about the, um, when he was breaking the, the, the loaves of fish and, and that and how much it took to feed everybody. But for 30 pieces of silver, we fed the entire world. Okay, let's continue. So in the Jerusalem Post at the top and the wind, I'm super sorry, guys, it's so loud. 400 selene of silver passing at every table and receivable in all transactions. And he confirmed the purchase of the field of Ephron in which was the double cave, which is before Mamre. The field and the cave that is therein and all the trees that were in the field 
in all the boundaries thereof round about, unto Abraham for a purchased possession in the presence of the sons of Hittah, of all who entered in at the gate of the city. And afterwards Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Kapelita, which is before Mamre, that is, Hebron in the land of Canaan. And the field and the cave therein were confirmed unto Abraham for an inheritance of Sepular for the sons of Hittah. All right, gentlemen, that is the end of this reading. And um, anyone have anything on this particular, on this at all? Uh, even though Abraham was really good friends with him, he, just, he still will not take it for free. He's like, I want to pay you for it. I want, I want to give you the money for this. Like, he wants to make it right. Abraham always wants to have everything just. He always wants to make it right. No matter what it was, even if he was good friends, even if they loved him, they saw he had power. And he still humbled himself before the people instead of like just being like the high prince, right? Because he was like, he was at that point, I would assume he's like almost as powerful as the king of that land. He was yeah, just, absolutely. He was just that much honored by the people. And he's like, he's like, no, 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 it doesn't matter how good I am. Let me pay you for this. Yeah, Abraham was definitely a different kind of a guy. Or, this uh, burial place is used a lot for, I think it uh, was used for Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph because they went after uh, uh, Moses left Egypt. He's like, take my bones, and so they ended up burying him up there in that cave. Yeah, that is a, it's a famous, famous land. I don't know if things are there to that day, but maybe. Okay, well, I think that is it for everybody out there. Um, if nobody in the chat room has anything out there, we would like to say we love you all, and we hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful Shabbat, and um, we will kick this out with one of our final songs. Eli, did you get us something decent? Yeah. You got something decent? That's yep. good. It's one of the Left Right Ministries. Left Right Ministries? Yeah. yeah. All right. We don't know who these guys are, but they sing really well. And so, um, very bottom thing. Okay. So, guys, with this, we will uh, say we love you guys very, very much. And thank you for hanging out with us, our little tiny Ecclesia. We love you all, everybody. Uh, much love from everyone here at the Boss Clan. <laughs>
guys one last thing go ahead jade and yahuwah spoke unto the moshe saying speak unto el Aaron and unto his sons saying on this wise you shall bless the children of israel saying unto them yahuwah bless you and guard you yahuwah make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you yahuwah lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and they shall put my name upon the children of israel and i will bless them okay much love everybody may yah keep you may he bless you may he forever shine upon you much love from everybody down here in this crazy place to all of you guys we love y'all. Have a good day. All right. Shalom. Shalom.